Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on the fundamentals of XR Router. By the end of the series, you will have a solid understanding of how XR Router works, and you'll be able to build most navigation flows. We'll use stacks, bottom tabs, modals, dynamic routes, shared routes, we'll set up an auth flow, and we'll leave this series open to extension, so we may add other navigation patterns later. While each lesson builds on top of the content from the one before, the ideas are standalone, so you could watch the videos in any order. But before skipping to your favorite section, I strongly recommend that you watch this video, as understanding layout files really is the key to understanding router. An XR Router project will have a root folder called app, which may contain only screens and layout files. The app folder can either be at the very root of your project or within a source folder. Both of these are supported out of the box. I prefer the source folder because it makes it easy to add components and utilities and such without having to put them in the project root. Every project must have an index route. So even if you don't use index files otherwise, you must have one file called index in your app folder. It is the screen that opens first when the app is launched. The only way to open a different screen at first launch is using a redirect, but at this time the index file still needs to exist. Note that due to the existence of grouping folders, which we'll cover in more detail in a bit, it is possible for the index file not to be at the very root of your app folder. It may be nested in one or more grouping folders. A project will usually have many layout files, and each layout file defines the layout for the screens adjacent to it. Broadly speaking, a layout file has a default export with one of the following. In most cases, it returns a navigator, which will determine how adjacent screens can be navigated between. There are three core navigators, a stack, tabs, and a slot, which is an unstyled navigator. The navigator does not have to be the only thing returned from a layout. For example, you could wrap the navigator in global providers and such as needed. A layout file can also return a redirect. This is a special component from XR Router, which will skip rendering any child screens and redirect to a different route. We'll use this in the all section later, but it's worth noting that at this point, you cannot use a redirect in the root layout, although you will be able to in the future. And lastly, you could return any other React Native component, or null of course, which will mean that none of the child screens are rendered at all and become inaccessible. Let's now try this out on a project. This is a blank Explorer Router project with one layout file and an index file. The starter project is here on GitHub. It's just a blank TypeScript project with router, native wind, and ESLint setup, plus a couple of components I always end up creating. The big difference compared to React Navigation is that when you return a navigator, you don't need to list out all the screens in your layout file. They will exist because this information is inferred from the file system. Let me update this text to show the name of the screen. Now let's copy this index screen to create two more screens, the second and a third screen. To link between screens, we can use this link component from Expert Router and provide it an href. I'll also pass in this push prop, which will ensure that a new screen will always be pushed onto the stack. If you ever add a new screen, but you end up in this not found page when you try to navigate to it, like I've just done, then do a hard refresh of your app. And now when I click on this link, it opens the second screen. It also automatically adds this handy little header button so I can navigate back. Another way to navigate is using the use router hook. So let me import my custom button and on press, I will call router.push to push the second screen onto the stack. And now this button behaves
is identical to our link. You can also combine these. So instead of calling on press on the button directly, I will wrap the button in the link and pass in the href as well as the push prop. The button is not looking quite right here because if using a custom component inside the link, you also need to add as child. And now we're using the link component with our custom button. There's just one other thing I wanted to call out here. If we use a text element in the link, then the link itself will handle the press event. If we use a pressable component here with the text, then we need to add as child, which passes the props down to the child element. This is why we don't need to implement on press here. A side effect of this is that if we now want to pull this into a separate component, like my custom button here, then we need to add forward ref, as well as passing down any additional props. Let's add a link to the third screen as well, so we could easily navigate to both from index. Frank Calise from Infinite Red created this nice little utility to list out all the routes that exist in your app. Let's do it now with MPX Explorator sitemap. It tells us we have an index route, second and third. Now let's add a folder called third and move the third screen in there. Now the route for the screen becomes third slash third because both the folder and the file name are used. But if I rename the file to index, the route becomes third again. Another way to do this is to use grouping folders. So if I rename this file back to third, but in the folder name add parentheses, then the route becomes third again. Note that you can name the inside of the parentheses pretty much anything. So for example, if you use tabs to group the bottom tabs, the tabs itself does not have any special meaning or power. It is literally just a convention. The grouping folder name only becomes relevant if you have two screens with the same route. All right, here's an exercise for you. I'm going to add another folder here called fourth and inside fourth, another folder called fifth and inside fifth, another folder called sixth. And inside sixth, I will add an index file. I'll call this a deeply nested screen and give it a green background. Now, what is the route for this screen? Well, to find out, let's right click on the file, copy relative path and see what we have. The route starts from the app folder, so we can remove source and app straight away. Grouping folders are also not part of the route, so these go away. And the file name index refers to the index route for the given folder. So I would expect this route to end up with fifth slash sixth. Let's verify this with the sitemap, and indeed. Let's also add a link to the deeply nested screen in the index page. Notice that we've created a bunch of folders, but none of these have layout files. That's because every folder does not need to have one. The nesting in a router code base can feel a little bit overwhelming initially, but just putting a screen into a folder doesn't actually do anything special apart from changing the href. In most cases, for every screen, such as this deeply nested one, you look in the same folder to see if you have a layout file. If you don't, you go one folder up and look for a layout file. And if you don't have one, you go one folder up, one folder up until you find one. There's gonna be one at least at the very root of the project. And once we find the layout file, we look for the navigator. And this is the navigator that this deeply nested screen is governed by. Now let's go into the sixth folder and add a layout file and we'll have a default export, which returns a slot, so the unstyled navigator. 
So if I refresh, I'm not expecting anything to change here because the slot is the unstyled navigator. But what if instead of returning a navigator, we return a view and some text? Let's also give it a red background just so it's easier to see. Now our deeply nested screen is not displayed. So why is that? The layout file that governs the screen is the one closest to it, so the one we just created. This layout file, however, does not return a navigator, so it doesn't return a slot, a stack, or tabs. Therefore, just the view and the text are rendered, and never the screen. It's really important to know that the layout files get executed from the outside in. Let me illustrate it a bit further. Let's go into the fifth folder and create a layout file. Initially, we'll just return a slot from this intermediate layout file. I would expect there to be no change because a slot is the unstyled navigator. But now let's change it so that we return some text in the intermediate layout instead of the navigator. Let's give this one a blue background to help it stand out. So now when we try to access this deeply nested route, we get halted in the intermediate layout file. And finally, let's try a redirect. I'll update my intermediate layout file to just return a slot again. And then the layout file is right next to the deeply nested screen. Let's redirect to the second screen. So now when I try to navigate to this deeply nested route, I in fact get redirected to the second screen. Let's see what's happening here exactly. So when we start to navigate to this deeply nested screen, the execution always starts at the very root of the project with this root layout file. In this file, we are returning a stack, which is a navigator. So we're good to go further. In the next layout file, we are returning a slot, which is also a navigator. So we are again good to go further. And finally, in the layout file that is adjacent to the screen we want to render, we are in fact redirected away from it. In this video, we covered some of the core concepts in XOROuter, layout files, redirects, and navigators. See you next time.